Now, if you watch the last video, you'll recall that I picked up yet another project car from the VW Group. This time, it's a facelift 2015 Scirocco R, which has had a bit of a front end knock. It's the first time I've decided to go down the salvage route, so I kept it relatively safe. It's not that bad of an incident. The structure of the car seems all straight. I paid £5,500, which was pretty cheap, even despite the category status. But despite that, there was still an element of risk, and that was mostly in regards to the engine. It had a significant amount of top end rattle both on the startup and also went up to temp. From my experience with these engines that usually indicates a faulty cam chain and tensioner or some form of oil pressure issue. So yeah that's the plan for today trying to solve this rattly mess with a whole host of maintenance items but before we get our hands dirty I'd like to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor Car Vertical. So if you're not really familiar with Car Vertical it's essentially a website that allows you to obtain a full history check on any car. All you've got to do is enter your registration or the VIN. Now as per usual I do have an example report that I found which will help demonstrate this service a bit better and today we're going to be taking a look at this Porsche Panamera. Now the top of the report is essentially a snapshot of the vehicle you searched for so in the case of this Panamera we've got no problems with any previous theft or the mileage being tampered with but it does say that there's a problem with its financial legal status and also the damage icon. So the records tell us that the car was an insurance write-off more specifically a category S which means structural damage and this occurred in November of 2018. There's also a second incident in March of 2020 but that damage is unknown and yeah my favorite bit of one of these reports is the photo section. Yeah it's definitely had a bit of a hard life hasn't it folks i mean that looks completely obliterated i'm surprised even a category s at this state because that means that it's repairable according to the insurance and we look at the state of the engine bay because it's not just a cover that's moved because you can see the oil caps in a different place as well and it just goes to show the different levels to a category s because this is apparently the same as what my Scirocco is right then folks so that's car vertical in a nutshell i've been using it for a number of years now and pretty much everything you see in the background i obtained a report before even considering the purchase now i do have a little incentive for you folks if you go and click the link in my description and then use the code TRH what they'll do is they'll save you 10 stuff in next report but as always big thanks to Car Vertical for their continued support of the channel let's crack on with this video now I decided to begin with the chain itself as that was my number one suspect in this whole rattling situation. It's located on the right side behind this aluminium case. To access it you're going to want to move a bunch of things out the way such as the battery, the coil packs, various electrical connectors and also a coolant line. Then there's a matter of putting the engine at TDC aka top dead center. This is indicated by some markers on the left side where the cam belt is located. As yes this engine is still belt driven despite having a chain on the other side that just deals with the VVT. To view these we need to get the auxiliary belt and tension out the way and the upper top timing cover but of course when I did that I uncovered yet another issue right so even though my intention today was just to focus on the cam chain and get that rattle sorted it looks like we're gonna have to do the cam belt as well now as you know we took this cover off to put the engine into its TDC position before beginning on the chain and all of that general area and it's normally indicated by two markers one is down below there on the crank so you got a tiny little indent and there's an arrow on the lower timing case and then behind the upper timing case you've got another arrow which are painted in white and that should correspond to this little indent on one of the teeth but as you can see it's out by about a tooth i'll put another marker there to show you where it should be now i've just had a look around it's definitely been done before because you can see previous markers in red so they obviously just made up their own idea of where the tdc position should be yes both pulleys do spin out a different rotation due to their size but i've double checked it twice and they don't line up at all so it looks like we're gonna have to take all of this off get rid of the reservoir i've already gone ahead and drained the coolant because there's no point continuing with this until we've sorted that out because the engine is a belt driven one now before we begin this job i just want to mention one thing i'm by no means an expert i've never actually done a belt or a chain on a tfsi before so it's gonna be a bit of a learning experience but i'm gonna follow all the correct guides and all the torque specs and everything as it should be from the factory hopefully it goes well if not and we start hearing metal on metal when we start it back up i'll just take it on the chin and maybe we'll have to just expedite those engine swap plans as we'd already began a tear down of this side there was just a few more things that needed moving the expansion tank a few hoses on the rail one of which will have fuel coming out of it so I have a tissue ready then it's time to head below and remove the crank pulley and also the lower bolt on the engine mat bracket six m10s there you go so here you can see a little bit better there's the indent in white that's where they've put their marker and also again there's where it should be and that's the previous jobs marker because of course we need to put something on the little pulley there when we remove this case because you're no longer going to have this arrow everything just covered in oil lower bolt out now because we're staring at them we might as well take off these torque screws for this lower timing cover now you can head back upstairs and remove the remainder of the engine mount but make sure you have a jack underneath the sump unless you fancy your engine falling through and yeah use a plank of wood to distribute the load all right we've got 13 mil Got 18 mils here 
see it moved should just come off like that so mount's in pretty good condition none of this is torn or damaged as an extra remove this off the engine so we can get rid of the lower plastic case you can jack the engine up to maybe get a socket on there or there's a little sort of access port through that gap that you could use get that 16 mil out now the engine mount bolt at the back there's quite awkward so i'm gonna try and jack the engine up a bit more that did the trick Basically, I can't fit a half inch ratchet in that gap. So it's got to be a 3 8 on a interesting combination of extensions. That's what I've gone for. Bit of a nightmare. Finally out though. This is probably the hardest bit of the job. But yeah, now that we've got that lower cover removed, we can see the full cam belt system. That's the water pump right there and this is the tensioner. We've also got two rollers that you replace in the kit. There's a bunch of debris though in here. It feels like they never cleaned it or they just slapped it all together now on the crank pulley when you remove the cover you also lose the tdc marker so what i'm going to do is paint this and then a notch on the block as well to basically say where it should be all right that bit is not brilliant but you get the idea i've made a mental note of it and i can refer back to this video if i need to okay so we're going to get the belt off next but we've got this tensioner here that has a 13 millimeter nut so let's loosen this so the eight millimeter allen just allows you to move it along Water pump next, so there's going to be a fair bit of coolant coming out of here, so make sure you've got a pan underneath. There we go. Hmm, nothing came out. Rollers. That's everything. Now, before we install the new Campbell kit, I just wanted to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison to compare the old parts against the new. These are all genuine items directly from Volkswagen, because I didn't want to have any doubts in regards to fitment and also longevity issues and whatnot also got a new hardware to go along with it but yeah in terms of the old belt the one thing i've noticed straight off the bat is that it's not a genuine item it is a bit hard to make out the brand but i think that says power grip potentially whereas the genuine one is a conti tech belt where well, you can see that the part number is pretty apparent now as mentioned in the service history for this car it states they had a cam belt change two years ago at around 50 odd thousand miles it's on 70 at the moment but i feel like they did change the water pump because i don't know about you folks this doesn't exactly look two years old to me and also the fact that it's OEM. I feel like you'd do it all genuine or not genuine. I don't know, those are my thoughts anyway. Bit of brake cleaner. Does the job. Get the water pump in first. Now, from what I've been told, these are only like 10 foot pounds, so we should be able to just go with the hand tighten and be okay. So we've got the two rollers next. This one at the top. Next, we've got the tensioner, which we're going to slot onto here. But you've got a little gap there in the block where it sits into. Now we're ready to get the belt on, but let's get that into the correct position and also double check the bottom there. So we're going to move it about there. Okay, I think that's perfectly in line now. The belt should just go straight on, but just be mindful of the tensioner as you'll want to rotate this with the 8mm Allen key until that raised segment is in line with the small gap where you can see the green behind. And then once it's in that position, you can tighten down the 13mm nut. This is just to prevent the belt being over or under tensioned. Pretty much all that's left now is to do two full rotations of the engine and see if these markers stay in the same position. All right, so more of my truth, we've got a 19mm spanner. You can see the marker coming up. Right, so the line's worn off, but as you can see, the arrow's pointing to the little gap in the tooth as it should do, and the one on the crank is pretty much bang on in line as well. So yeah, the engine's all timed up, pretty good result. Pretty much all that's left now is to get the lower timing cover back on, the engine mount or whatnot, and we're good to go. Right, so now that we're done with the belt and the car's all timed correctly, we can move on to the chain and try and fix that rattle that was basically the main goal for today's video. I've got all the bits that are required for the job here ready on the table and we're gonna have a closer look at it shortly. But before I get into all of that, I just wanna drop a quick reminder. If you enjoy content on this channel, make sure you do go down and click subscribe. Got a bunch of stuff planned this year, whether it's on the Scirocco, the R36 Passat, or the Caddy RS. So yeah, if you like seeing content on cars from the VW group, you're definitely in the correct place. And we're getting really close to that 200K subs goal as well. So it'd be great to have you on board. Now, just like the cam belt, I've gone for all genuine items just to alleviate any doubt. I have seen situations where people have gone for basically the equivalent branded item and they're not the same quality. There's various different controls that the OEM products go through. And I don't fancy taking a chance. But yeah, we've got the chain itself, which has a little brand marker there. We'll explain the significance of that when we're fitting it. We've got a brand new adjuster bolt as well, which is no 
known to strip quite easily. It's an M10, but you've got to have a specific socket. So I've gone for the genuine tool. This is an M10 socket, but it's a poly drive bit. So it's got slightly more squared edges. I've also got a genuine VW cam locking tool. You can get aftermarket ones, but I thought I'd just invest in these bits with the various projects we've got going on. But yeah, without further ado, let's get the car back down and just crack on. After double checking that the engine was still at TDC, I began with a high pressure fuel pump, which had definitely been off in the past, judging by these pen marks. I've shown this process a few times on the channel as the cam follower that's located inside is a common TFSI wear item. You've got the lower nut, which stays in place, and then you've got three Torx bolts, one of which is only accessible after you remove the valve on the end. Bit of equal pressure to remove it. Here we go. The follower bucket was definitely worn, but at least it wasn't destroyed, which believe me, it can happen if you leave it long enough. I then moved on to the rocker cover. There's a few hoses attached to the front and back, the usual stuff, and the rest of it was just torque screws. There we go. The N205 valve and the vacuum pump was next, and then you're pretty much good to go with removing the screws on the perimeter of the timing case itself. It does require a bit of fiddling, but let's see if this is all in pieces, judging by the sound that this car makes. Now, before we even have a look at anything, I think that's our answer for why this car is so rattly. Now I'm aware that oil pressure will probably tighten this thing up, but that just seems like it's just excessive. Also the end of the cam there doesn't seem to look too bad. So that means there hasn't been no follower damage and no foreign debris, which is also great. Now with the engine being in top dead center, there's little indents there on the cam. So that should slot in like so. Right, so cam locking tools in place. I've also made a few pen marks to remember where it last was just in case it moves. They're not the greatest, but they should do the job. But yeah, without further ado, let's move on to the next bit, which is getting the M10 screw out of there. Either it's going to be a complete walk in the park or a nightmare, we will see. But I'm going to get someone to lever on the bar whilst I apply pressure onto the bolt. I think you got it, innit? Yeah. Yeah? All right, so thanks to Lewis, that wasn't as stressful as I thought it was going to be. The bolt is hand tight now. I'll just put all my pressure onto this thing. I did not want it to strip whatsoever. But what I will say is that the OEM tool does still have a bit of play. I mean, if I put that into there, I mean, it's not completely foolproof. It could do with being a slight bit bigger. Well, I guess this is how it is. Just are off now. Old chain. Yeah, that just, okay. Yeah, that's not great, is it? I'm not sure if that's meant to be like that. You can't really see much in terms of differences on the chain, one's a bit cleaner. They're both genuine items, as you can see by the part number being stamped on there, and they're made by INA. But it's interesting that they used to be produced in Germany and now it's Slovakia. And then we've got the casing itself, which has the rings on there. Somehow they didn't break when I took the casing off because that apparently is what happens. I've got replacement ones here in any case. Now the tensioner pretty much goes straight on. Just make sure it still has the pin inserted. And then for the chain, you want to identify the bronze links. From there, count left till you reach the 18th and 19th dot. Mark these with a paint pen and then do the same on the opposing side. Then grab your cam adjuster and identify this line marker on the back. You'll want your 18th and 19th link to sit over this, but on the side where the bronze link is visible. On the cam itself, there's another marker. This is where that bronze link is going to go so line up first and then attempt to get the adjuster into place it probably will go on straight away as the cams have likely moved a touch so get those back into line as well as accounting for the indent on the back of the adjuster i'll be honest folks i ended up using some locking pliers not ideal but they did do the job this cam locking tool off okay i think this time we pull this pin out that seems under tension. Before putting the case back on, replace the three oil control rings, especially if they're damaged, and also check these lower ports for any blockage. These housing bolts are 10 newton meters, aka you don't need a torque wrench. Just don't go too crazy because it is aluminium. So we've got the N205 valves. There's a little O ring which I'm going to replace. There's a new O ring. Put a bit of oil on it. Vacuum pump next. A few light taps. All right, so high pressure fuel pump, we've got this O-ring which we want to replace. Oh, that's gone flying. Silicon spray, old cam follower, new one. Keep it nice and square like that. With the chain oil built back up, it was time to move on to the rocker cover. It was pretty much covered in oil and dirt, but a good wipe down with some brake cleaner did the trick. I also changed out the gasket for a new one and also cleaned the engine mating surface. Breather hose. So we've got the upper timing cover. I've given it a bit of a clean. 
From here, it was just a case of reinstalling the items that were in the way initially. I threw on a new auxiliary belt as the old one had seen better days, reconnected the expansion tank, DV hose, charcoal canister, and also topped up the coolant. Right then, folks, we're finally at that point now where we can start up the Scirocco and see if we fix that rattling noise that the car's been suffering with. So it's very nerve wracking. It's running though. It does, sound... it does sound a lot better. I'm not gonna lie folks, I think it might be a bit of a success. That ticking noise is pretty much the exact amount of tick you want before it was very excessive. <laughs> That's another tier for side engine saved folks. So it's definitely a good feeling. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Let's turn it off and continue with the rest of the video. Right, so now that we've established that this thing runs, it was time to drop the sump and check the condition of the oil pickup pipe. And whilst we're there, we're gonna install a Viz balance shaft delete, but more on this shortly. There you go. This is a bit where you get oil on everything. 36 mil. Brand new, genuine, mangled, whatever it is. Sometimes it's the basics, folks. I don't know why people don't do it. Thankfully it's in there. Put that on, put some oil around it as well, filter. Don't mistake this for a Torx because it's not one. Some cars it's an Allen though, but it's an M8. More oil. This very messy outlet pipe, which has some T30s. Right, so next we're going to get all the perimeter screws off. I've already noticed there's a green pen marker here and also on the screws. So this sump has definitely been off before. Now these are relatively easy to get to, but the ones in here are a bit trickier. So use a ball headed Allen socket. Down. Pickup pipe looks mint. Right, so pretty good news there to be fair. The pickup pipe's all clean. As I mentioned, the sump has been off because of the markers that I saw on the bolts. But that isn't always a guarantee that this is going to be completely clear because I've seen situations where people have done this job but then put too much silicon around the sump that's dropped in and then clogged it again straight after doing the process. But yeah, we're gonna swap this out regardless. You could just clean that up to be fair, it's not bad at all. But we also are gonna be doing a balance shaft delete. I've done it a few times on the various TFSI projects on the channel, regular viewers will know what it is. You essentially swap this particular cog out for a freewheel one, because those shafts in there are known to seize at higher mileage or if you're abusing the car at higher RPM and they can take out your engine because that's exactly what happened to my old S38P. So yeah, it's just a bit of preventive whilst we've got everything off. And in regards to the sump itself, we've got no foreign debris in here, which is great to see. So the pipe's held in with one T30, it's not hard at all. Just make sure you replace the O-ring and also the bolt for good measure. Right, time for the balance shaft delete. Okay, I'm just gonna shove some sort of thin screwdriver up into that gap there. And this is an M M12. You can hear a bit of air moving. There we go, that's cracked off. All right, so bolts off. So you put in a screwdriver in there, just slackens the chain. There you go. So that's the original one, it's a solid cog. So obviously when the chain spins, it spins this whole unit. Whereas with this Viz one, you've got a bearing in the middle. So you still can spin the chain, but this basically is a freewheel. So it cancels out the balance shaft essentially. That's the logic behind it. All right, so installing it is seemingly a lot easier. Leave the screwdriver in whilst we thread it down. And then 20 Newton meters and I degrees. There you go. All that was left now was to prep the sump. I started off with a thorough clean. I think you get the general idea by now. Everything that we've removed needs to be spotless before reinstallation. You'll then want to apply some sealant. I use a Durco branded one as per VW specification. It does start to dry in 30 minutes though, so you best get cracking with the install if you're going to do it. And of course, I did wipe the surface prior to that.
Right, so all done and time for some fresh oil. Quantum 5W40 in this case, and these cars take around 4.7 liters. I also swapped out the dipstick for a new one. Right, so we've got the car back on the ground now. We're gonna go for the second startup. Now I haven't fully connected the engine cover because I've left the coil packs disconnected. I'm gonna do a few cranks to build up a bit of oil pressure, and then we'll go for the proper startup. That is one smooth sound in tier for Cyfox. Mm, that feels good. Revs clean, gearbox is nice. Right then folks, so we're pretty much good from a mechanical perspective on the Scirocco now. I'm happy to drive it around and not worry about it blowing up. Cam belt's done, chain's done, pickup pipe, balance shaft delete, coil pack, spark plugs, rocker cover gasket, fresh oil, fresh coolant. Yes, we do need a few bits like a new aircon rod and also a fan, but the actual coolant radiator seems to be all good. It's not leaking anywhere. And of course, we have got the whole front end to sort. But yeah, we're going to get into all of that in the next episode. So make sure you are subscribed and also you drop a like if you enjoyed today's video. Follow my Instagram as well at tiahamza underscore to get updates in the meantime. But yeah, folks, I'll leave it to you and I'll catch you in the next video.